Modern Playbook. I'm joined today by none other than Ultra Maximus, host of the Wednesday Presser, live on Tales from the Flipside each and every Wednesday. Uh, Hello. My dear friend, Mr. Long Short, uh, the most controversial uh winningest modern uh, comic book uh, prognosticator in the business. Hello, uh, hello, hello. Thank you. Good to be here, Nico. And unquestionably, uh, the best mind in comics, Steve, from My Bargain Comics. Uh, you're also very humble. You don't have to say anything. But I, we I'm all just know glad to be here. I, I, I'm ready to play. <laughs> that, that reaction was awesome, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, what I've done uh, in an effort to try and um, stump the panel is uh, pulled some uh, auction results. I haven't given them any indication as to what uh, books we're going to be talking about. Uh, but these are uh, live auction results for uh, modern bangers uh, that have come down uh, in the last week. Um, and I want to get their uh, thoughts uh, about these particular books. So, uh, without further ado, The Boys, number three, first appearance of Homelander, CGC 98, uh, a sale for just shy of $300. Guys, for me, um, I, I don't understand why The Boys hasn't been getting more love from uh, the rabid uh fan base for uh modern comics i mean the amazon show was a hit by all accounts uh critically acclaimed uh is looking for a third season and a spin-off project uh, a homelander uh, retailer variant uh will cost you a heck of a lot more than this even with multiple printings of the same cover um is this a, a bargain are people just not uh, aware of the price tag of this book uh, or what's going on inside of this book. Um, Dalla Ben, oh. thanks for joining us. Uh, we're talking about uh, this particular sale for the first appearance of uh, Homelander in the Seven, The Boys number three, CGC 9 8. Uh, guys, what do you think? I, I think mean, that this is a Wildstorm print, also. This is not the Dynamite reprint. So note that, that when you guys are, are looking for these issues, you want the first six issues with the Wildstorm imprint logo on it. Right. And, and it that's probably the reason. If any trade dress, th then you know you've got, uh, this was uh, a dynamite wow. Kickstarter. But wow. I think and I showed that in pickups a couple weeks ago. Virgin variant of that. So that, that's even more interesting, man. So the boys, I don't, I don't even think it's even, I think we're now just starting to see people notice these books so i think that this uh, you know how many are on the census do you did you were you able to get that data for us yeah, I, didn't, or no? I didn't pull down uh, any real uh data i apologize uh no, that's fine I, I, what i'm just saying is that i think that we're gonna see more get graded in the future especially with it bringing 300 shipped <laughs> yeah yeah i mean th th this honestly this price I would have guessed it would be higher. There's this book is arguably more important than the first uh, number one, just given the, the characters that appear in this one. I don't know what it is about the boys and, and, and some of the the prices of their books. I mean, the, the show is it too edgy? I mean, I think it's phenomenal, super entertaining. Uh, this is shocking to me. I would have guessed this would have been going for a lot more. I haven't been personally chasing this book, but. I don't know, 300 in 9.8 seems like a good deal for this one for me. Well, here, here's my take on it. It's, um, and we had this discussion in, in our Hangout this week about indie books. Uh, you know, when's the last time you saw a cover price, um, non-number one indie book, you know, sustain a value of more than $100 over a, uh, over a 24 month period. I think that was the criteria I set up. And um, yeah, so I, I think part of it is just the, um, although, you know, Ultra pointed out that this is Wildstorm, so it's not officially indie, but, you know, most of the bulk, the bulk of the run was under Dynamite. Um, 
and I think it's hard to get people to pay attention to, to just non number one issues. But you know, I, I think we're all expressing great love for this book. Um, and you know, I, I'm part of the El Chico Club, but you know, even I, I might, you know, spring for it at this price because you know, I, I love it so much. Um, so you know, 298 looks to me like kind, actually kind of reasonable. Yeah. Is this a record for this? I honestly haven't been following it this closely. I mean, it's 298. Is like it, it seems like it's too low, but I, I think we all agree. Uh, hell of a steal. Congratulations to the buyer. And uh, I'll be interested in seeing if there are more eyes on this book in the future. Um, Time will because tell. it's not just in, in this issue. It's not just uh, Homelander. It's the Deep and everybody, all the all, all the other all the other characters. I mean, there's a lot of key first appearances in this in this book. I would watch all six first Wildstorm printed issues before they switch to Dynamite and being reprinted, and seeing what all those do in high grade, because those are the ones. That, I mean, if you're if you're a boys collector, those first six are the ones. So. All right, so let's jump uh, to the next one. Uh, I, I know this is a book that uh, is getting a lot of uh, quiet attention among um, speculators and uh, sophisticated uh, modern comic collectors. Uh, Batman 655 is uh, the first appearance uh, of Damian Wayne. Now, um, when I was collecting before I took my five-year hiatus, Batman 655 was a cameo, much like Hulk 180 was a mm. cameo of Wolverine. Uh, it wasn't until uh, I took my five-year break and came back and saw people go uh, hog wild over this um, one in 10 variant that really the market kind of shifted. Um, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, if somebody could talk a little bit about uh, Red X and, and the speculation around Damian Wayne and, and some of the excitement about the character, and then maybe uh, a little bit about uh, the 655, 656 uh, issue, uh, I'd well, appreciate it. Well, okay. So I, I did catch that when you read New Teen Titans Future State or the Teen Titans Future State uh, offering of, of issue one. Dick Grayson's walking around and he finds the Red X mask. He picks it up. And at the end of the book, he gives Red X the mask and lets him out of jail. So it's a very interesting... You, you, you see a little bit of backstory, but you, you're, you're only given breadcrumbs of it. All the, Everybody's accounted for, supposedly. So we, in Robin Eternal, we have Tim Drake. Well, actually, no, that's true. Uh, both Jason Todd and Damian Wayne are unaccounted for in the future state lineup right now. So the speculation is that Damian Wayne is Red X, just like the the Grant Morrison Batman and Robin run where it was Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne in, in a team up. We're seeing a, I called him Nightstroke to, to combine you know Nightwing and Deathstroke into into the character. But Sounds uh, kind of uh, dirty. I'll that one does. Well, you know, um, <laughs> the, you know, the, there there are wor there, there yeah. are worse alternatives to that one. It's definitely uh, not. It's definitely, it's a good point. It's a good point. There. So you know, I, I do, not, I, I do see it. that that pairing of those two coming back via this method of Nightwing and Red X. Yeah, and I, and I and I like this book, but this book has, as you said. Its drawback is that it's only a one-page appearance at the very last, the last page of the book, but it's the I mean, entire it, it's the entire last page of the book, though. Right. Yeah. I think so. They they, they, yeah. they pulled that and then they put him on the cover of the next one, and then he's no it, no he's no he's on the cover of the the one two issues after that. The next one is the one where they're on the cover of the pirate ship, right? And then so, yeah, so I mean, there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving pieces in this, but. The, that whole entire arc, if you're a Damian Wayne fan, you need all four of those issues, 655 through 659. Sure, but we can all agree that if uh, this was um, 2020 when these books dropped, 
uh, I, I think there may be a different winner. And I'll be interested if uh, there's a lot of attention on these two books, whether or not, you know, some of the real um, vocal IG uh, folks come out and start screaming about 656 being a real book. And if there's a move to uh, try and, and replace uh, 656 as the, you know, critical book, irrespective of the CBCS or CGC label attached to 655. Well, here's the here's the difference, though. I, I don't believe uh, six fifty six has a variant, right? And six fifty five does. That's one hundred percent the difference, right? Yeah, and and that that's really the the difference. And you know, I, it's funny. I wasn't even thinking about this book in the context of um, of Red X, and that's interesting um, to to hear. I guess I just don't keep up a, enough with uh, you know. I guess I still want it to, to be a, a surprise. So I, I, I guess I haven't really thought too hard about it, but um, re regardless, um, I mean, Damian Wayne's, you know, an established character. Uh, I mean, th this book has a, that character has a long tail um, and, you know, will eventually at some point, you know, show up in, movies and tv and you know he's part of the 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 mythos of um of batman yeah, so it, I, the yeah. other thing is i guess if this book dropped uh this year would some of the demon trade paperback first print be like a two thousand dollar uh <laughs> nine eight certainly would <laughs> yeah right. it, it's a different world than where well, we come from and look at the cover of 657 that's the missed opportunity right there the cover for 657 is the one that has him swinging the sword at Batman with, you know, with uh, Tim Drake in the in the Robin costume standing right next to Batman, you know, getting struck by this little kid. So that right there, I think, should have been the first. If that was the first, that would have been the perfect storm. Um, okay, so uh, on that note, since I already spoiled it, uh, here's the next one for you guys, for uh, those who are uh, newer to the hobby that have uh, gotten really angry about expensive second prints, I'd like to uh, bring your attention to ASM 654 second print uh, that's been beloved for a long, long, long time with one of the coolest covers ever, uh, different art, uh, interior art, and yep. uh, a major, major, major uh, book in high grade. Um, this is kind of a, a lackluster uh, result for this book, to be perfectly honest. A lot of excitement around anti-venom, uh, some disappointment in the casting of Flash Thompson in the Spider-Man film, I, I think, uh, cooled a lot of these books. But um, what do you guys think? I, I remember working at the LCS and pulling this issue from back stock and putting it in a case with a $20 price tag on it. And watching it sit there for over a month before I finally took it home and then sat on it for, I think, like another two months before the first injection of Flash Thompson craze went nuts when he joined the Guardians of the Galaxy for Free Comic Book yeah. Day that year. And then uh, the, the reorganization of Venom Space Knight and all that other stuff had increased the heat on this book tremendously. Cool. And then it cooled off when you exactly what you said when Spider-Man Homecoming's character that was cast for Flash Thompson kind of ruined a lot of people's dreams that they were going to be able to see this version of Venom show up in in this in, in basically a live action setting which I can't fault them for that I mean everybody was hopeful that every everything that they desire you know shows up in some kind of live action setting uh, but I, I do remember watching this one ride the wave, but this is interior art from the in, inside of the book. And uh, if if Flash Thompson somehow makes it out of King and Black because he did make a brief appearance, I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, yeah, so I mean, everybody who's ever been inside of the Codex, their DNA and their memories are part of the Codex. So <laughs> it's it's kind of wild. It's like it's like the Matrix. And uh, everybody's connected to it, but it's organic. And uh, that would, it, it, I mean, it, it, if he comes back as a Venom or an anti-Venom, what, what's it going to be? That that would affect this book. 
Yeah, I'm surprised that this, I mean, this, this book was, damn, a hot book, but one bit on it, it says, huh? So it was listed for 275. Um, you know, this kind of sort of early on sort of set the stage for late printings being legitimized a little bit. So, um, yeah, but I, it, it I, I think it's going to be hot again. I, I think, I think Agent, Agent Venom is, is, is definitely going to pick up again. Um, um, but this, uh, somebody got a pretty good pickup here, I think, assuming it's tough to see the condition there, but I think that's probably a pretty that's, good score. Not it as good a, as it's a nice copy. I mean, but this uh, is kind of like uh, part of my little theme here, which is um, if this book happened today, boy, would people cry about it being recycled interior art. I mean, I think that's really what held uh, down that uh, Silver Surfer uh, black uh, first appearance on uh, – you know, the third print of, uh, help me out. Um, Thanos number 15, 15. Thank you. Um, right. Is people were like, oh, no, it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, I I don't, I think the market's wildly inconsistent, right? If you look at Venom three third, that was interior art and that book fucking peaked over a thousand bucks in nine, eight. So I think (laughs) the market is not now though. Yeah, no, it's come back. What is it? Four hundred <laughs> bucks now or something? But yeah, three three seventy five, four hundred. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, to a place where it seems like a, a reasonable number that I would actually consider buying it. Actually, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the interior art. I mean, depending on what it is. I mean, I love all three the interior art. art. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it other than just being interior art. Um, yeah, everybody wants something new, but if it's a really cool shot from the inside. A book that nobody ordered, it can it can definitely blow up. It's uh, well, I think and it's I love. We talked about the three that I think I love the most, man. I mean, those are three great examples of interior art that was appropriately used as a late printing cover uh, for real bangers. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I, for me personally, I don't hate the in, when they use interior art, particularly if it's a if, if it's a good piece. Um, doesn't bother me at all. Um, it's all for me at the end of the day, sort of the scarcity and the importance of the book. Um, and, um, you know, some hit, some don't. Okay. Well, um, speaking of things that hit, holy shit, 35% price variant. (laughs) Holy shit. What's up? I love this. Uh, No, this, this is, this is something that we talked about because previous perspective list, you guys brought up this book. And this is a book that I said, watch out for those, watch out for those price variants because I know they're out there. People forgot about them. Sometimes people mistake them for the reprints because the reprints were thirty five cents, and that's where people get a little bit lazy in pricing these books. So a three five that sells for five hundred thirty five dollars. That's why I'm laughing. I'm almost to the point of crying because ain't I, nothing I, like I've the real ha- thing, baby. I, I, I've, right. pro- I've probably had like ten of these go through my hand, and I'm kicking myself for not buying a single one of them. I, I think a lot of re- I think a lot of retailers um, just didn't even think about it. They they, they are all very aware of number one, right? But number two, forget it, right? It, you know, I, I saw somebody walk. I don't think it was. I, I didn't couldn't tell if it was a price frame, but I saw somebody walk out of a store with this book. You know, probably less than a month ago for thirty five bucks, right? It was banged up. It wasn't you know a, a super sharp copy, uh, but pulled it out of a back issue bin and you know it was in front of me checking out with this book and um, three yeah, five got five hundred thirty five. What's your friend get? <laughs> <laughs> Lord yeah, mercy. Three point five for five thirty-five. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, that is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, thirty-five cent price variants. We we talked a little bit about them in the past. Those are our regional books. Ultra was kind enough to remind us that we'd be better off living near Niagara Falls. Um, <laughs> uh, there's some real cool ones. This uh, past uh, flip side, uh, we talked with DS Comics about. Um, the first appearance of Star Jammers in the Uncanny X Men. Uh, there's a highly coveted uh, price variant of that book. Obviously, some really cool Eternal price variants. Um, the Star Wars number one being the number one price variant. Uh, a close second would be the first appearance of Sabretooth and uh, just a, a ton of cool stuff. Uh, for some people, they don't care. Uh, it's not a thing to them. Uh, for others, it is uh, the rarity 
that they are looking for and they are willing to spend major, major, major money. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that stuff. I, I think the whole market shifting towards you know books that are more scarce, right? If, if you can find something you know within a book that, that differentiates it from sort of the bulk print run, people are going to run to that. I just want to know, does this thing get a premium, the 35 cent variant? In 3.5, is there like some symmetry there that people want to pay up a little bit more for it? I don't know. I, I would, I'm almost afraid to even know if somebody out there is sitting on a 9.0 or above copy and if they grade it and it goes to market and it goes to auction. I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering what the guy out there who's like, hmm, I already have the 35 cent variant in 9.6. Now I want the number two now that I know it exists like yeah, type so of scenario. It, they're cool to check out on the CGC census because uh, you'll see modern copper, modern books um, that have a census of like 12 copies, 24 copies, seven copies. It, it's like nothing you've ever seen. Uh, I mean, there's a price variant for um, the uh, Marvel Spotlight uh, Moon Knight uh, second appearance that I, I think hasn't really uh, gone crazy yet. Um, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities there for, for right. books. If the right collectors uh, decide that they want to copy, um, they rarely come to market. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled. We'll talk. Well, we will that. find out the answer to this question almost exactly one week from today because there is a star wars 2 9.2 35 cent variant signed oh. ss signed by roy thomas starting at 99 cents um and it ends on uh 10 30 next saturday wow we can we can go in shipping too so what a deal so. damn I mean, I know, I know, by the way, for our listeners, well, I don't know when this will be released, but uh, shipping goes up tomorrow, USPS shipping. So. Oh, well, thank you for that heads up. So yeah. I'll go <laughs> ahead and, <laughs> and make those adjustments. That hurts my heart. <laughs> well, first class and priority are the only ones that are important for, for small booksellers. And, yeah. yeah. What you got? Hulk 1. First appearance of the Red Hulk, uh, CGC 98, $255. It appears that everyone has forgotten about uh, America's sweetheart, Scarlett Johansson's uh, forthcoming Black Widow film. Uh, it, I mean, we've all uh, been really excited to see what uh, William Hurt did with uh, Red Hulk. And, uh, you know, frankly, I think uh, a lot of people are asking whether or not... Um, He's got the vitality to uh, rock it out as the Red Hulk over the course of uh, several years. Um, what do you guys think about uh, the Red Hulk as kind of a spec play? Do you like this book? Do you like any particular book? Is it not something that you're interested in or are you excited about the Thunderbolts? I've actually been specking it a little bit. Um, I grabbed this one. You know, he Red Hulk shows up on the cover here, but not in the interior intellectual issue two. If anybody cares about that, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I grabbed this second print for next to nothing um, recently, um, just as a play on this. You know, who the hell knows? But I don't know. I figured it was a, a safe play for I think you know ten or fifteen bucks. So um, you know, there may there might be something there. The Thunderbolts have been heavily linked to the MCU. It sounds like they're going to have them show up in some way, shape, or form. We may see this. Uh, starting in March some way in the Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm hoping. Um, Marvel's going to have to um, make up their mind on Black Widow. They can't keep pushing it out forever, right? I mean, there's a good chance movie theaters aren't getting back to, to full steam at all in 2021. Um, how long do they want to delay for, right? They, they're going to have a log jam of, of, of projects that are just going to be sitting there. They're going to have to be you know, putting out you know two movies uh, you know, two movies a month at some point if they don't watch out. So I think they're going to have to swallow it on uh, on Black Widow here. And I, I think Red Hulk um, is, is, is a interesting spec play. It may or may not happen, but, um, um, you know, there, there are ways for you can sort of spec on this 
with it without throwing huge money at it. Um, so I'm sort of chipping away at, at some different opportunities. And, and, and I, I had a spec play that I was kind of seeing because I agree with what Nico said about William Hurt aging out of being able to do this job. They could do it one way. They could do William Hurt only doing his scenes as Ross and then having somebody completely different do all of the stop motion with, you know, the the Red Hulk scenes. I think they'll do that 100% regardless, right? If I mean, that's if that's if he's the Red Hulk. But I was also thinking about the other Ross that's already currently in the MCU and who's young enough to carry a role and has already appeared. And that's the Ross uh, from Black Panther. The guy got shot in the back. One of one of the uh, one of the hobbits. Oh, um, yeah, the, the, the agent there. Um. Agent Ross. I mean, his, his last name's Ross also. I don't know what the connection is, if there is any connection that they're trying to do. But I was thinking maybe he would be the one taking over the Thunderbolts role if Zemo does go good guy. And, they, and you know, if they are able to turn Zemo after Falcon and Winter Soldier into Major Victory or uh, Agent uh, Agent V or whatever, man, that that version of Thunderbolts I would watch. Of course, we, w we would all wish for the, the Thunderbolts version that has Venom, Punisher, Elektra, Deadpool, Red Hulk... Yeah, I don't think and, we're and Ghost Rider. I don't think we're getting that one for a little while. But uh, uh, well, and uh, if none of that happens, um, I think as She Hulk approaches, you know, uh, uh, rumors rumors are going to run rampant. We we can't control whether we like them or we don't. We believe them or, or not. And you know, they, they as could she -Hulk show approaches. People yeah. are gonna. Think about, yeah, Amadeus Cho, they're going to think about Red Hulk. They're going to think about Red She-Hulk, of course. Um, but do you guys, what do you guys think about the other variants? Like, if this one's pulling in 255 for an A cover, hmm. there is the... Turner's yeah, got one, doesn't he? There, yeah, There's a Turner so. variant. There's also an Akuna variant. And then right. there's also the Atomic Comics variant, I believe it is. The one that's got, like, the Atomic question mark on, on the cover where it's asking who the Red Hulk is. So there's there's a ton of variant play for well, this well, book as well. There's two of those, uh, the Atomic Comics and the one that doesn't have the Atomic Comics on it, right? I think so. Yeah, so there's the ratio, and then there's the, the store variant. Um, and there's a newsstand of this one as well. Yeah, um, wait, wait, can we get back? Let's get back to the, the, the first part of this whole thing. So there is a raging debate that has been going on for I don't know since at least since I got back into comics years and a large majority of the community do not believe this is a first appearance of the red Hulk. And now we all, we already touched on that. I always think that I, I personally, I think number two is the first full appearance of the red Hulk or the first appearance of the red Hulk speculation wise though, this brings us back to remember when that Funko pop, dropped with Black Widow and she had those red PIM particles mm -hmm. and everybody went crazy about that, you know, being possibly Red Hulk. And then it was, you know, later uh, hashed out to be uh, su uh, Soviet super soldier serum. We never really got a straight answer, but I think them pushing out Black Widow further and further possibly possibly keeps us further and further from the Red Hulk. I think they need to actually get Black Widow as close to Falcon and the Winter Soldier as they can. And they need to do it pretty pretty quick here. So we can or, figure it out. Or they're pushing back Black Widow to incorporate the Wolverine, Captain America, and Black Widow that, story. That's a good point, too. From that's X-Men 268. X 268. Correct. That's a, that's a great point. But, yeah, I think number two, I think, honestly, it's, it's, it's a 50-cent book, a dollar book. I think the actual uh, the the market labels it as the first appearance of the new abomination or what have you. I think in my mind that people that are that are collecting or speculating on the Red Hulk should always have copies, high grade copies of number two on hand, because that is the first time in story we see the Red Hulk. We do not see him in this book. Okay, now not to uh, belabor the point with Batman 60, uh, 655 and 656, <laughs> but what the hell's the difference between being on the cover and being on the last panel? 
it's been treated it, it's been treated inconsistently for years right first cover appearance first appearance i mean and it's why the intellectual debates of like this is right this is wrong uh at the end of the day matter so very little uh to me when i'm trying to sell books because really i just want to have them both and sell them both at the right time that's a good point that's why you have right? that's why right. i say you you better have two just just in case if you're speculating, yes. Great. Yeah, like I want to sell the 655 when people like that book and the 656 when people like that book. I want to have the Hulk 1s to sell when people like that book and the Hulk 2s to sell when they like that book. Um, when it comes to my own personal preference, well, that's a different thing. That's my personal collection and, you know, piss off. Yes. I do what I want. Uh, well, but anyway. There's one, there's one thing we can all agree on, I think, though, is that uh, the Hulk appears in both Incredible Hulk 180 and 181, right? Right. And he's okay. there. And he's, exactly. he's, yeah, right. he's there. He's there. So I'm okay. in both places. Um, Just checking. Just checking. <laughs> the last point I would leave is that I'm not 100% sure William Hurt is going to play the Hulk in multiple. I think they're going to, if we see him, it's going to be in one movie or maybe one TV show. And that'll be more or less the end of that that character. I don't think they can bank on this guy being around for for very long. So I don't you, think you read my mind. I was right. actually going to say they're going to do a three minute spot in She Hulk, showing him get depowered and removed of the Red Hulk, and that's all the Red Hulk we're going to get. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be quite that. So I, mean, I think we're going to they'll, they'll have him show up, and maybe it's even Black Widow. Who the hell knows? They've said, um, but it will, he'll show up somewhere, but it's not going to be some drawn out. You know, arc that's going to go on for for a decade. I, I just don't no. see him multi season television uh, series like many had projected for the Thunderbolts. Not going to happen. Uh, I think we all kind of agree. All right, yeah. moving right along. Uh, it's uh, Dick Ryder, uh, Richard Ryder, not to be confused <laughs> with Dick Stroke or Night Stroke, um, a beloved character and uh, the elder uh, Nova Core. Uh, Patriarch. Um, nine six is dirt cheap. Uh, nine eight will cost you about a G. Uh, we've seen uh, interviews with Feige recently where he indicates basically like, look, Sam Alexander, sure, he'll be Nova. Uh, Richard Ryder, sure, he'll be Nova. Uh, when? Uh, I don't know. Sometime in the next 10 years. Uh, leave me alone. Uh, Robbie, Robbie Ryder, Talon R. That's all I'm saying. First appearance Robbie, is in here too. Yep. Robbie Ryder, first appearance is in this too. Good. Yeah, and uh, I still like uh, the female whose name I can't pronounce um, from uh, Infinity Gauntlet number one. What the heck's her name? Anybody pronounce it? Oh, uh, she was on the cover. She was on one, uh, one of the submissions. Uh, yeah, the, we liked the Granov. Uh, there's a couple such other. A good cover too. Yeah, but uh, the point is the Nova Corps got legs for me. Um, this is a, a low point for this particular book. Um, I don't know that I'm necessarily a buyer. Uh, you know, it's it's one that um, is out there uh, in, in massive numbers. But, um, you know, the kind of uh, uh, counterfactual to uh, Mr. Longshort's very insightful observation about a market that is looking for a uh, rarity wherever it can find it is that we simultaneously are in a market that doesn't seem to really uh, care too much because the demand is so rabid for books like ASM 300, um, books like New Mutants 98, books like ASM 361, uh, that what we have uh, traditionally thought of as uh, books that Hulk 181 just had too many dang copies uh, yeah. have instead seen astronomical gains. Um, is this a, a good play, guys? I mean, uh, should I be trying to buy high-grade copies of, of Nova number one? Well, there's there's a lot of these copies out there. And like uh, Ultra said, don't forget, it's also the first appearance of Robbie Ryder, and there's uh, some solid speculation on him. But uh, going back to that question, I mean, sure. I mean, when it's this cheap, I mean, I don't see any any hurt in putting a couple copies away. I just think smart money 
probably would go put money behind books that are less available. And there are just so many copies of this out there. I've been seeing this fluctuation uh, margin uh, for a while now. So, you know, I mean, the book hasn't really moved up or down uh, more than what, 20, 40 bucks. Yeah, I mean, I've never chased it just because it felt like there's so many of them. And yeah, you raised some good points, Nico, you know, ASM 300, um, you know, New Mutants 98, but they also feel meaningfully bigger characters, than right. Nova, just not to necessarily disparage Nova at all. And if you also notice, New Stand, New Mutants 98, getting a huge premium. And ironically, Ooh. ASM 300 New Stand, which I'm not even sure there's fewer of. I think it's kind of 50-50, frankly, for, for that for that for that book between New Stands and, and, um, and Directs, getting a huge premium. I don't think there's anything in this book other than high grade, which has separated itself, as we've seen, to really chase for, from a scarcity standpoint. Um, um, but listen, if you love Nova, you need to have this book. Um, I think if you're specking on this and you're looking to move it, there's going to be a gazillion of them coming to market at the same time, and you're going to have to lowball it. So it's about buying right, right, Correct. buying this thing cheap and selling it uh, at the right time. And, you know, it's... I've, I've stayed away from it. I've got a couple copies, but I'm not, I'm not big, you know, chasing this book. But I think it's a cool book to have. It, it, that's a, you bring up some great points. A lot of the market right now is so character driven, you know. So I mean, yeah, this, we're going to see the fluctuation of this number for nine six and nine eight. You know, go up and down, probably for the next uh, several months here until you know, the smart money comes in. Good stuff, guys. All right. Speaking of New Mutants 98, 600 bucks for a 9.6. I remember earlier this year when I kept losing auctions because I was trying to pay uh, less than $600 for a 9.8. Um, it, it's as if uh, these books have doubled in high grade uh, slab condition because they have. They it's have. as if there isn't 300,000 copies of this book. Well, but buddy, uh, that's what, so, all right. I, uh, I've been talking to people about this. I think I finally have uh, figured out one of the biggest weaknesses I have. Um, and it's the reason why I have zero copies of Hulk 181, zero copies of New Mutants 98. And I uh, just recently uh, grabbed a copy of ASM 300 um, if you've been collecting for a long time, um, you remember when New Mutants 98 was kind of like whatever, uh, New Mutants 87 was the book, was the book. If you've been right. collecting for a long time, you remember, you know, that ASM 298, uh, the first Todd McFarlane was as important and to many collectors more important than ASM 300. You remember ASM 361, the first appearance of Carnage being a very common, who cares about it kind of book. And, um, you know, we've talked about it all podcast long. Um, the demand for these characters is so strong. We are seeing record prices for all of these books. I uh, read uh, recently a... Uh, I read a lot of uh, like psychological journals, um, you know, from like neuropsychologists and, and so forth, uh, like uh, scholarly work because of what I do for a living. I'm an attorney. Uh, don't hold it against me. And I was reading one that was talking about how um, when you meet uh, a woman who's under the age of 18 and you're significantly older than than that person, right? Like you're in your 20s or whatever, you will forever, like your buddy's kid or something, I don't fucking know, but you'll forever see that person as that age. Like it's a, um, the, the way that our brain sort of like conceptualizes value, uh, that's, we, we freeze frame it, right? Uh, that that's kind of like how we are um, wired. And I think that that happens uh, with comics too. You know, like I remember what a uh, Hulk uh, 181 cost, you know, when I first started paying attention to it. I remember, you know, when this was a, a second uh, class book compared to New Mutants 87. Um, and, and that's kind of freeze framed in, in my mind the value of a high grade ASM 
300 is sort of like freeze framed, um, you know, but I've made a lot of mistakes as a result of that. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that that's an investing principle as well, Nico, right? There's this whole concept of anchoring. It's a behavioral bias. You get it sort of stuck in your head and that's what it always is. Um, you know, this book is, is a modern anomaly. I will say this, right? When it comes to modern characters, there's nobody as popular as Deadpool, right? There has not been a modern character, right, who has challenged um, Deadpool, right? Just hugely, hugely popular. I think it's reached people who weren't really into comics, pulled them in a little bit. The reach is very, very um, strong for this particular character. Um, you know, it, this is not a rare book, right? We all know that. I rotated mine into newsstands before anybody was paying a newsstand premium just to try to get some scarcity around what, what, what I held. Um, um, and I think, um, you know, I think this 600 is shocking because I bought a 9.6 newsstand uh, in January of, you know, before the pandemic hit for three hundred and twenty five dollars uh and it's the only one i have left so um there we uh, go <laughs> yeah and, and let me add uh to that you know there is a australian price variant that is uh very sought after um and also a mark jewelers uh insert and i believe there's a canadian price variant too if I'm not mistaken i don't quote me on that one double check that but i let me just add to this so i it's funny this book came up. I was talking to Ben on the Hangouts the other day, or maybe we were texting or something, and I said, you know, I was looking at prices at Deadpool, and I was like, you know, uh, Christmas 2019, I was looking at 9.2 and 9.6 Deadpools. I saved some money up, and I was looking to, to buy this book. And um, basically, to cut it short, I said, do you know what the uh, – what the price was in 2019 compared to now and ben said let me guess double and i said yep double oh boy oh boy good stuff guys i really appreciate it um final book uh on my uh comic book controversies so um we talked a little bit about uh iron man 9 and iron man 7 on the uh, pro spec list. Um, I uh, <laughs> joked because the third print of Iron Man 7 uh, straight away on the cover indicates that it's the first appearance of Riri Williams. The market does not care. Uh, <laughs> they want, right? Much, you come full circle, guys. Do you see what I'm doing here? Just like uh, Batman 655. <laughs> They want the one in ten variant, um, you know. For our money, we uh, kind of like those later printings, um, but uh, I don't think anyone can deny uh, the future is bright for uh, this character. We're going to see her in live action in her own television series, and uh, then she, we, I believe, uh, she's going to be uh, co-starring with Don Cheadle in the Armor Wars television series. And, um, you know, by all indications, appears to be replacing Tony Stark as the Iron uh, Woman of the MCU. Um, I think Ultra and I have shared the same opinion that she will rep replace Iron Lad, most likely, in the Young Avengers team as well, right? That Young Avengers is not going to be a, a direct translation from that original series it's going to be some variation of young avengers one young avengers two who knows and i think they're going to replace hulkling with cho and iron lad with riri and they'll still have a majority of everybody else there you've got ant-man's daughter she can take over for stature you know she's obviously going to be a little bit younger but she's it doesn't need to be an exact take on the Young Avengers book, like to a T, but you'll still have Kate Bishop already in place to kind of lead the Young Avengers. Because I don't read the Young Avengers enough as I probably should, being as popular as they are. But it is, it, am I wrong in saying is Kate Bishop the official leader of that team? Yeah, she. I mean, her and Patriot kind of went back and forth at each other, hmm. you know. But she was really the leader of that team. I mean, he was. It was kind of like they dated in that series. They had like a. 
like a pretty sort of aggressive type relationship. But yeah, Kate Bishop ended up being the one running the show there. And, and is, is he in the show? As far as we know, do do we know if there's Eli any? Eli Bradley's been heavily rumored to be in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, it's not confirmed, but heavily. I forget the actor who was linked to, to him, um, but but heavily rumored to be in that show. Yes, um, introduced in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Uh, so I was reading something. They were saying all of these shows are going to introduce Young Avengers. Right. Every there's going to be a new Young Avenger in every single show. So I think Cho, if I had to guess, would show up in She Hulk somewhere. Maybe. Um, my guess. Um, but but they're going to be dropping these characters, um, these Young Avengers throughout. Um, the different TV shows, or they put uh, Hulk Hulk Hulk. or they put Hulkling in Secret Invasion, right? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what. Yeah, Secret Invasion. I mean, that's such a big story. I don't know how they're gonna. Well, it's gonna be a lot different on TV. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they can't um, do that, right? And, There's no and way. For the record, uh, Kang and uh, Iron Lad. I mean, Kang's cast. Uh, we know that, so you know. It, I don't know that it's outside of uh, the realm of possibility for there to be like these two competing uh, characters, right? Like theoretically, I, I mean, as ridiculous as it sounds, we could get Iron Lad, Iron Heart, Hulkling, and Amadeus Cho all in live action and, and have them, uh, you know, essentially compete for the spots and go different ways. And, uh, you know, who knows? Um, it's uh, all very interesting. I, I don't want to... Um, uh, kind of belabor that point too much, but I, I do well, want to talk about uh, the Bradley pick, um, not uh, the the Bradley we were talking about. But Ben, um, you uh, were kind enough to to bring uh, the books that I forgot to screenshot. Yeah. So um, you know, this is kind of a. I was talking about this book the other day. It's kind of controversial, but I did this this cover of Wizard. It always stuck in my head as just being stunning, right? So that's Isaiah Bradley, the first Captain America. This came out in August of 2002, four or five months before Truth, Red, White, and Black uh, came out. Um, this image uh, of, of Isaiah Bradley's is the best that I've ever seen, and it was only used um, on this cover. It didn't show up on any other print that I've ever been able to find. The only other place that I've been able to find this image used was on a trading card I believe that Upper Deck produced of Marvel characters, and this was the the, the cover for this was the the picture for Isaiah Bradley. Who's um, the artist? So this was uh, Joe Casada, um, who did That's that. That's what I, I was going to get. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I think this book is hugely important. Now let's talk about how available it is, right? I mean, this is my copy from when I was a kid, right? So I still had it. I was digging through my old Wizards. You know, it's not in great shape. Um, when Wizard was putting out books. And around 2002, their circulation was sort of 65,000. Um, um, and this book had three covers. So if you remember reading Wizard back then, they would have multiple covers and they would just sort of be a third, a third, a third. So, um, you know, maybe there's 20,000 of these, 25,000 of these made, I don't know, something in that range, let's say. Um, you know, most of these things aren't in particularly good shape. I know this is treading dangerously close to the previews. Um, um, area, but I, I just think that this cover is particularly important, just given um, given how cool it is. Um, so um, you can buy these for nothing. They're like you're not going to spend a lot of money on this. You know, you can pick them up for five bucks. Um, but I think for for short money, it's a really cool uh, cool book, and it's a cool story about like laying the groundwork for the first Captain America in here. So um, do you keep the poster. You know, I don't fucking have the poster. I must have hung it up. I probably, I probably hung it up on the, my wall somewhere. So um, <laughs> um, I, I don't have it anymore. But I saw the poster selling for like fifteen bucks. Oh uh, come on, man! Um, so, uh, uh, but the poster is killing in the bag. You, you, But you can still find these in the bag. I bought one with the bag, so um, so I could have the poster. Nice. Um, is it one of those situations where you can buy the wizard and sell the poster for more than what you pay for the wizard? Yeah, I, I think it's 100%. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, 100%. The Weapon X, like the Weapon X poster that comes in Wizard Magazine. You can absolutely sell that sucker for more than you, <laughs> you can the uh, Wizard Magazine. You know, and there's a couple of artist books like that, too, like uh, the Josh Middleton artist book. There's there's a Bat Batgirl poster in there that sells for more than the book. And a couple other ones, so just 
Weird yeah, stuff. and that Clone Wars trade paperback. Watch out. All right, so there's the book that I like that apparently nobody else likes. Uh, I think this is a great book. Um, um, you know, this was a somewhat of a controversial series. So that the wizard why, was laying the groundwork for this ultimately came out. Um, you know, I was a little let down by the art in this because I was just, you know, I saw that image. It stuck in my head, and that's so badass. And this is a very different art style um, um, that took me a little while to sort of... Um, to adjust to, but but good nonetheless. But yeah, but so this is Isaiah, the introduction of Isaiah Bradley, the first Captain America. Um, this series was interesting. It says one of five here, I'm sorry, one of six here, um, but it ended up being a seven issue series. So they ended up extending it. Um, um, you know, I think if, if Isaiah Bradley does in fact show up and I think it's almost, you know, needs to happen in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, you know, these books become uh, really interesting. The book I don't have here, but I think, and I need to verify it, so I don't want to pass false information, but I believe issue six um, is when he becomes Captain America officially, fully Captain America, dons the costume, he is on the cover. Um, um, don't quote me on that, I, I need to verify it, but that, uh, and there's not many of them out there, you know, as these series go on, as they always do, Number one's heavily printed, and they tend to dwindle by the time they get towards the end. The seventh one is actually really tough to, to, to track down. Ben, yeah, what, absolutely. What, what's the time frame uh, of this book? I, I haven't read it, and I know I noticed on that wizard cover it said the first Captain America. So when does this take place? Uh, this was World War One. Was that what? Hold on. Interesting. Okay. Huh. I mean, you can look at some of the. the, the so so the, this this is the this is the uh, the internals of. Um, Okay. Of the uh, of the Wizard magazine. So you see, you see the picture that ended up being yes. the first cover. Right. Um, I haven't read this since it came out. I need to revisit it. Um, but I, be I believe it was World War One. But it was it was it was basically um, you know the start of the of the Super Soldier Serum project, and they tested in a bunch of Black Americans, and then um, Isaiah Bradley was the one that sort of took and became became the first Captain America. All right, so we've kind of come full circle again. Uh, we expect that uh, we're going to have a Wolverine weapons plus uh, plot develop in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That seems to be the direction that the tipsters and insiders are suggesting uh, Marvel is looking at. They've laid the breadcrumbs for that, and it may begin as early as the Falcon and Winter Soldier series with uh, those folks uh, using Madripoor as a uh, cityscape for at least some of the plot of the series. Dude, yeah, I hope Wolverine I, shows I, up. <laughs> and, I, and I think it's smart by Marvel to tie Wolverine and Hulk together. I mean, Wolverine and uh, Cap together. Um, I think it's a really smart move, lucrative move for them long term. And, and, and if if that is the reason why Black Widow's delayed, wouldn't that be like the best reason ever? Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Yeah, um, and I mean, it, Evans, one of the projects that they it's come up over through different sources is that he's coming back. It's going to be him and Cap in World War uh, Cap and Wolverine in World War Two, right? That's yeah. the, that, that's the story they're going to tell. Um, 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 somehow weaving it into the present day is what was what they're talking about, which makes perfect sense. I mean, there's a lot of of um, of, of books that they can reference to tell a good story there, and I think it makes a lot of sense. All right, anybody got anything else? Yeah, well, I mean, if you're if you're speculating on that story together, there's some early covers. Um, Ultra Maximus just. Uh, mentioned uh, uncanny x-men 268 it's the first reveal of um wolverine uh captain america and black widow um actually working together in world war ii and then there's also in a, a really it's actually a sick cover but i don't really dig swastika or nazi covers at all but wolverine origins number 16 mm -hmm. It has, um, it actually has uh, Logan. I think he's an old man, Logan, in actuality. It, he looks old. And uh, Captain America. And then, unfortunately, there's a big swastika in the top right. And there is, a, there is a, a niche for that. But it's a great cover. 
I just don't care for the swastika. But those are two early covers that I could recommend possibly speculating on for this kind of storyline. All right. Good stuff, guys. I really appreciate everything. Uh, please tune in next week for more Modern Playbook.